I think I'd like to create, like Billy Wilder. I show you the apartment and tell you some like it hot. Or maybe, like Mr. Hitchcock, I'd make you scared of heights, ropes, birds, and binoculars. But until then, all I have is this Time Store Cinema. Hello, YouTube, Internet, world. Welcome back to another episode of Dime Store Cinema on the Road. Let's talk movies. Today I'd like to discuss the... <laughs> the absolutely absurd comedy Shaolin Soccer. This movie is made by Stephen Chow, the director of Kung Fu Hustle. He also stars in this movie. And <laughs> it makes me smile so very much. So when I first saw this movie, it actually wasn't my idea to see it. I thought that it looked ridiculous. Uh, I, was, I was not excited about it. Um, this was... This was back in my, uh, you know, four or five movies a day phase of my life. And uh, I, I would spend a lot of time at my friend's house and we would rent a bunch of movies. This is back when they actually had rental places. And most of them would do deals where you do like, you know five movies for five days, or four movies for four days, or three movies for a week, or, you know, they would always have some kind of deal like that. Uh, the two in particular near me, they did four movies for four days for four dollars, and they also, there were also was another one that did five movies for five days for five dollars. So we would often go to one of those places, get a stack of movies, and just spend the weekend watching them, or even just a day or two watching them. <laughs> and he picked out this movie. Uh, I lightly protested. I, you know, I was always up for watching new things, so I didn't, I didn't push back too hard. But I, I was not interested in seeing this movie in the least. Um, I can't even really tell you why. I think it was mainly the cover. I thought the cover looked really cheesy because it's, it's uh, kind of the. Um, what's often associated with with low budget action movies these days where it's kind of um uh like hand hand painted graphics as opposed to uh to pictures and um the trailer that i'd seen of it made it look like there was going to be a lot of silly cgi and things like that um and there is silly cgi but the silly CGI is, is actually pretty silly and funny as opposed to what I thought it was going to be, which is going to be a mess. So this was an instance where my expectations were just completely off the mark. This movie has so much charm and so much heart and so much humor that I, I still to this day love it and will watch it anytime I get the opportunity to. Anytime the, the mood uh, strikes me, I, I will put this in and I will watch it. Uh, same with, with Kung Fu Hustle, although Kung Fu Hustle was different because I, it came out afterwards and I, I knew that it was by the same guy, so I was very much looking forward to seeing it. Uh, and it lived up to expectation, whereas this one just completely blew my expectation out of the water and um, ended up being... <laughs> A brilliant film and in a, a, a sort of satire uh, you know of sorts and um, this is kind of what Stephen Chow or Cho I'm not sure the actual correct pronunciation um, because I'm an ignorant um, moron uh, in any case, uh, this is his, his typical movies, and there's one that he made that I haven't seen yet that I really want to see, that kind of, uh, is, uh, a, a sort of, a uh, a 
homage slash um, spoof of like Chinese gangster movies. And I haven't seen that that one yet, and I really want to. Uh, but Kung Fu Hustle is is the is kind of like the, the subversion of the um, the classic martial arts story, the kung fu story of the one, the one coming into his own and defeating the evil. Uh, and it, it it follows all of the steps like that, and it's it's great. And this movie is is sort of like that, but but. Unlike that, it's much more like the classic uh, kung fu movies where it's um, dojos being re represented. Because there were a lot of kung fu movies like that too, where things were based on um, on style and training. So it was the it was the um, it, the the idea that was posited in a lot of, of um, old kung fu movies was that a particular style was the best style, a particular school was the best school, uh, and, and that kind of thing. And, and this was kind of playing with that that archetype, uh, while also uh, playing with the, the archetype of the underdog sports story. Uh, it, it was just, it was so much fun and that's what made it so great is the fact that it was really fun it wasn't just a spoof it wasn't just an homage it didn't just follow story beats it, 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 it brought a bunch of different things together and everyone just looked like they were having a great time um, and there were there were small issues with it I don't want to I don't want you to think that you know, my enjoyment of the movie made me blind to some of the some of the problems. There were problems. The CGI was 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 very uh, unbelievable. Uh, it did not pass at all. Um, then again, I mean, it's an older movie. You know, we're talking like sixteen year old movie. Um, but but even so, the the CGI was not the best. And then you know there were, there were issues with with pacing. There were issues with editing. Um, there was some, there were some things that were very, um, stereotypical, um, there were things that, uh, like I said, with pacing, where towards kind of like the end of the middle of the movie, it slowed down a lot and it drug a little bit, but even with those flaws, and those are flaws that are common in just movies in general. The difference is, whereas many movies have these flaws, not many movies have the uh, entertainment value of this movie. So it makes up for the small flaws that it has with the sheer enjoyment that you get from watching it. Uh, so basically the story is you have this, this uh, group of people, uh, they were childhood friends, they were all... Um, martial artists when they were children they all had a specialty in their in their martial arts um, and in particular the the main guy Stephen Chow who is also the director as I mentioned uh, he is very interested in finding a way to use his martial arts training essentially to make a living because, uh, you know, the, the idea is that, you know, you can't make money being a brilliant martial artist. You can fight, you can stand up for yourself, but that's, that's not what he wants to do. And he wants to find a way to fuse uh, Kung Fu with, uh, with a profession. So the first part of the movie, you have... Um, different endeavors that they go on to try to to meld these things uh, one of the ideas is is music <laughs> they try to uh, form a um, a kung fu band and this doesn't go over well because they have uh, no musical ability whatsoever and it ends up 
it ends in them getting into a fight. Uh, and I should say that at this point there are only two of, of the friends who are still trying to pursue this. Um, and after that failure, that's when uh, it's just Stephen Chow. And then um, a soccer coach gets, uh, who used to be a huge soccer star, uh, who became, who is very, who, um, through corruption and collusion ends up getting injured and can no longer play, still currently walking with a limp, even now that he's an older man. Um, he gets let go from his job as an assistant coach for the, the, um, the villainous team. And so he sees, uh, Stephen Chow doing different things with his martial arts and he comes up with the idea of using that for soccer. So then the movie is Stephen Chow uh, getting all of his childhood, childhood friends back together, forming a soccer team, and um, then working on getting into the league to, to go. So, and then, of course, as that goes on, they do form the soccer team, and then it, it, uh, it all ends with the culminating last, uh, last game against the villainous team where the guy gets fired, and it turns out that there's corruption, and it ended up that uh, the, the owner and coach of the villainous team is responsible for the coach of Stephen Chow's team being injured and losing his career, and so, it, it, like I said, there there are a lot of stereotypical beats. You know, you have the you have the uh, <laughs> the underdog sports story. There are a lot of those elements, and then of course you have the the um, the old kung fu movie uh, archetypes that are thrown in there too. Uh, but what makes it it fun in particular is Stephen Chow's character because he plays a very uh, naive, and I don't even want to say naive, but a very um, optimistic character he he doesn't let the setbacks keep him down he always is trying he always uh, you know he always has a good head on his shoulders and tries to, to think positively and he's he's convinced that that his kung fu is the answer to everything and it, it just it adds this fun and light-hearted element to it um, and then of course his friends are also uh, hilarious. They're they're cast against type, which is great. Uh, so the idea is that um, <laughs> you know there were former former martial artists who mastered each mastered a specific style, um, but who have long since given up on their training. So now their their bodies are are no longer. Uh, representing the the skill that they have had mastered so you know it, it, <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of that type of thing but you know it, it wasn't geared towards children like a lot of these movies were but it, it wasn't you know offensive or uh, containing any kind of um, questionable content like a lot of movies aimed towards you know an older audience it was just a movie that anyone can enjoy because it is genuinely funny and um enjoyable so i just uh, you know i don't want to sing like i said i don't want to sing the praises of it too much because it does have its its problems you know it's not without its problems but I think anyone with a sense of humor, anyone who likes soccer, anyone who likes old kung fu movies, and anyone who likes uh, uh, sports underdog stories will like this movie. So that's I mean, that's a lot of different genres that you can you can pick from, and I think anyone who likes any one of those will enjoy this movie. And there's a little bit of a romance story in it too. So and it, and what I like about it is the romance story is is not. 
it's not as annoying as a lot of room band stories are. It's it's really cute, and and part of what makes it cute is Stephen Chow's character being so naive. Like I said, it leads to a lot of um, miscommunication between him and and this girl, and it's just it, it's a lot of it's just a lot of fun, and it's 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 goofy, in, in the best possible way. It's goofy. So, yeah, I mean, I would recommend it. Like, you know, I, I think almost anyone will enjoy this movie. I, I recommend it. Uh, it's worth your time. It's worth your money. Um, so, you know, if you get the chance, give it a watch. So, thank you all for watching. Please like, please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. And I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.